Today, we're going to be doing a video on how to AC TIG welding aluminum. We're going to go through everything from tungsten selection, setting up your torch, uh, to the base material prep, machine setting. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and start talking about some machine settings, what they mean, and you know why you're going to adjust them. The machines typically have some default settings that are kind of in that range to get you going and then you dial them in as you're trying to achieve that weld you're looking for. Other than the basic setting, which any welder, if you're TIG welding, you've probably done some other forms of welding before, is current. We're gonna set the main welding current on the front face of the machine, and then I'll be using a foot pedal today. I really suggest when you're doing any TIGging, get a foot pedal. It, it's just gonna help you out that much more. It's all a part of being comfortable. So your main current, that's going to be pretty easy to understand. If we're doing 1 8 material, I'm going to set that machine to about 180 amps, which may be a little bit above where I'm actually welding. And then that foot pedal, I'm going to dial in the current because I'm going to ramp up high to get my puddle started. But then as the base metal starts to warm up and my puddle is established, I'll back off the current a little bit so that I can get a nice puddle that flows and will have a really good heat. Um, one of the other settings you're going to see come up on here is pre-gas. What pre-gas is, is the amount of time between when you initiate an arc start on the machine, it's gonna flow gas through your torch, and then the arc will start. And that's to ensure that you have argon, in this case, when we're welding aluminum, we're using 100% pure argon. It's gonna ensure that when that arc fires and starts, it's doing it inside the shielding gas, in an inert environment. So one of the things I suggest, if you haven't used the machine in a while, before you even start an arc, hold your torch away, strike it, listen for some gas flow, and purge any atmosphere out of your torch lead. So pre-gas, I was doing some reading. It's typically around a third of a second. If you have purged your torch, that's gonna be enough. It's gonna get gas flow, the arc's gonna start, and then you're gonna be welding. Some of the other machine settings here, other than pre-gas, which we just talked about, are gonna be the initial starting current, which, again, I don't believe you're probably gonna have to play with for now. That starting current is just the amount of current it's gonna take to get that arc fired. If you're welding really thin material or maybe having a hard arc starting, you may wanna turn it up or turn it down depending on what you're doing. The other adjustment the machine has is the current like, ramp time, how fast it's gonna go from that arc start current to your actual working current. That is gonna have preset settings. I'll show them to you. The actual flow rate of argon we're gonna be using today, a good rule of thumb is CFH, I believe it is. Set it to twice your nozzle size. So if we're using a number six nozzle, we're gonna dial our argon flow into about 12 to 15 CFH. If you're using a smaller nozzle, you need less gas flow. If you're using a large Pyrex cup welding stainless, you're gonna need a ton of gas flow to cover all of that metal and the weld puddle. So again, that's something two times your nozzle size is a good place to start. The next setting on the machine is gonna be the opposite of your ramp up currents. It's your ramp down currents. We'll show you the demonstration on the user panel here. I'm not convinced I'm gonna play with any of that, but one thing you're gonna to wanna to know about and probably need to adjust from time to time is post gas. Post gas to me is fairly important because it all has to do with not contaminating your tungsten or your part. If your gas shut off right when you stop your current flow, you're gonna still have molten aluminum that then becomes exposed to atmosphere and contaminates. Your tungsten is gonna be glowing red hot and immediately get exposed to atmosphere which is gonna contaminate it. So post-cast, I think the was reading in the manual on this machine is default to two, three seconds. That's really gonna be dependent on your base metal and your tungsten size. A smaller tungsten and smaller base material is gonna cool down quicker, which means less post-gas flow to let everything cool down to the point that it won't get contaminated when the gas is removed. As you go up in um, base metal thickness and tungsten diameters, like going to 3 8 material or a 1 8 tungsten, all those components are gonna hold heat longer, which means you're gonna need 
more post gas flow to cool the tungsten down, let your weld tunnel solidify before that atmosphere comes bombarding everything. It's all about trying to find a nice optimization there. But there's definitely some good settings to get started with. Something this machine can probably help teach you with is it has, you know, smart settings. You can tell it aluminum and the thickness and it is already preset settings for pre-gas, uh, current ramps, post-gas, frequency, balance. It will do all that in there for you, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't understand the settings yourself. That's been a lot of talking. So I think we're at the point where let's fire this up, power it up. We'll go through the menu on this machine and let's start laying some beads. I want to get some nice close-ups. I'll describe the step of establishing your weld puddle and moving the bead along and dabbing in your filler rod. So I think we're ready. Let's fire it up. All right, so I was talking to you about Argon Flow. Now, the one thing you want to do is set this while the gas is flowing. And as you can see, that's at about 15, so I'll dial it back just a bit. I don't quite need that much. That's pretty good. Okay, so this video is, you know, going to be specific on this Yes Welder CT2050, but a lot of these settings are going to be similar to any other machine out on the market. This welder here, you select the weld mode, AC TIG, DC TIG, stick, cut, um, cut com, and then here is your torch modes. So 2T is your button on your torch because this one has a torch button. 2T is momentary, so the arc is only established while the button is being held. 4T is push on and then push off, and then foot pedal, well, I think that's pretty explanatory. Then some of the other settings you can go through, as you can see here, input line voltage is 233 volts. The machine right now is set at 45 amps, which we're gonna be using significantly higher than that. I'll be setting to about 180. And then if you push the button here is where we're gonna go through the slope down, I stop, post gas, uh, balance, frequency. So we're gonna get to pre-gas. So I'm gonna leave it set at about half a second Starting current is 15 amps. If you are welding really thin material, you may need to lower that. If you are having a hard arc start on materials potentially thicker, oops, I guess it goes through the menu. Let's get back to I start. You could turn that up. Okay, so here are all the settings the machine has. As we talked about before, we have pre gas. We can turn that down, we can turn it up. I'm going to leave it at about half a second because that's a good start. Um, I start when I clicked on this initially was set at 15 amps. That's a default. Now I have noticed that the pedal is uh, more sensitive than what I was used to. So since we're welding thicker, well, not thicker, but welding 1 8, I'm going to turn that up to about 30 amps. And that should bring the effective control zone of my pedal closer together. Slope up is zero seconds. Okay. So it's going to go from starting current to full adjustment. We have our operating current at 180 amps, which again is fully adjustable through the foot pedal. Then we have slope down set at zero seconds. If you wanted to ramp down and help crater fill, you could adjust that because as you uh, slow down your current drop, it helps to fill the crater in on your molten aluminum. Let's get back in there. I stop is 30 amp or 15 amp, sorry. So I want to set that to 30 as well. We can play with some of these settings and see what they change. Post gas set to four and a half seconds. I'm going to leave that there and determine on my own whether or not I have enough gas coverage at the end of my weld um, so that it's not contaminating the tungsten or the aluminum. And we'll go back and adjust post gas if we need to. All right, let's get back into the menu. Balance, as I said, set to 35. Let's turn that down to 30%. I think will be a good start for the clean aluminum we're welding with. And frequency, 
you know, we'll set to 100. As I said before, 85 to 100 hertz is a really good place to be welding with your typical aluminums. Um, it can go all the way up to 250 hertz, which is absolutely wild. Um, that is a very high frequency. I've never welded at 250 hertz, but I guess there's a need to do it. So, ah, let's get back in here. Oops. All right, hertz, let's get that back down to 100. I like 100. And put our current back to 180. So there you go. If you want to go through all the manual settings, that's how you do it on here. You adjust your pre-gas, your starting current, your slopes times, your welding currents, your stop currents, your post-gas, which is an important one in my opinion. Balance is also very important. And frequency is as well, but I find I don't, have, I don't often play with hertz that much. So the other thing we can do is let's go check out this smart feature of the 2150. Okay, so to get the smart feature enabled, let's hit AC TIG Smart. That lights up all of our other side of the menu here. So we have everything from 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14, 1 8, 3 16. And the weld position. If you're welding flat, vertical, or overhead, it's going to adjust the currents and see, there you go. We're at 3 16 and it picked up the stop current. Post gas, it did increase as well. Balance is 30, which is good, 85 hertz. Pre gas, starting current, and weld currents. And as we cycle through your different weld positions, it goes ahead and adjusts all the parameters to have the optimum weld for the given thickness material and weld position you're welding in. Now, because I've done this for a lot of time, I really just prefer on setting everything myself. But if you're new to it, hit the smart tick, let the machine preset the values for you. And then once you get comfortable with the actual process of welding, then go in and start playing with things yourself. Don't let this overwhelm you. It's, it's one of those things, you really just have to get in there and play with it. So I think that covers most of the settings. Again, we're gonna, gonna only be using AC TIG welding in this video. If you wanna go through and see you know, some of the other settings that this machine offers, go ahead. But this is a AC TIG welding video. So I think we pretty much got it set up. Let's go over to the table and get some welding done.